Hello, everybody. Um, oops. Um, so I'm Sanjay Bidichandani, and I'm the head of pediatric genetics at the University of Oklahoma. And today, it is my distinct pleasure and honor uh, to introduce uh, John J. Mulvihill, um, the, my, my mentor, uh, as the recipient of the 2017 ASHG Mentorship Award. Um, John has had a, a long and illustrious career in genetics, and, um, and I won't talk about his many contributions in research and education and service. I'll just limit my brief introduction here to his uh, contributions in terms of mentorship. Um, and so John in the 1980s was, at, was in the intramural program at the NCI. And in that role, he started the clinical genetics section there, but then went on to start the NIH Inter-Institute Medical Genetics Training Program at the NIH. <clears throat> um, and through that program, uh, during his leadership, 25 uh, fellows graduated through that program who've turned out to be the who's who uh, of, of genetics today. He replicated a similar um, uh, success when he moved in 1990 to Pittsburgh, where he started the human genetics department there. And again, 18 fellows went through that program uh, in the various subspecialties of genetics who have also gone on to become leaders in both academia and uh, industry. Um, he then moved south to the University of Oklahoma, uh, where he currently is the Kimberly Taley Chair, the endowed chair of medical genetics there. Um, again, started several training programs there and several uh, fellows and, and, and trainees have gone through that program as well. Now, John lists 73 formal trainees as, as his mentees uh, in his CV, um, and many of whom have actually co-authored uh, you know, his publications. He has 350 plus peer-reviewed publications. Um, and, but he also has scores of informal mentees. Um, I count myself amongst those. He, I'm not listed on his CV, but he's got several of these kinds of people who he's mentored you know, over the many years. Um, and how does this move? OK, here we go. So you don't have to see my bald spot there. Um, and, and so, so John has mentored several people. He's actually the only one I know who sent out evaluation forms to us as to evaluate his role as a mentor. So that's something maybe other mentors can consider doing sort of in the future. Um, and, but one of John's major characteristics is to identify young talent and get them hooked on genetics really early. So for instance, he started this program called the Gene Team uh, at, at the University of Oklahoma. And we've had at least 70 uh, trainees go through that program over the past several years now. Um, and they're typically undergrads uh, or, or first year medical students, but also high school students many times. And several of them have now decided to make genetics as part of their career plans. Um, and so, you know, he, he touches people at a very young age. And he's also played a role at the American College of Medical Genetics Foundation, where they have the Summer Genetic Scholar Program. And then a couple of years ago, at the University of Oklahoma, he put, literally put his money where his heart is and made a personal financial contribution to set up an endowment um, in honor of his own mentor, Jeff Altshuler, and set up this Mulvihill Altshuler uh, Endowed research program to train young Oklahoma geneticists uh, sort of in the future, you know, long after he will retire from there, these guys will keep seeing, you know, his mentorship value there. Um, I'm just going to tell you one single quote from a letter that was put in, in as part of his application. And it said his mentorship style is subtle but persistent. Before you know it, you're involved in an activity he made possible that moves you further along in your career. And so that's his style. He just sort of, you know, you get into his orbit and suddenly you're doing something he's planned and then it works out in terms of your own career plans. And so I'll leave you with this last slide here. Um, three years ago, when John was um, starting to play a, a, a bigger role at the NIH in the NHGRI's uh, undiagnosed disease program, so he was starting to spend a lot of time at the NIH, we decided to make sort of a farewell 
even though he's officially still with us, um, uh, for him. And we invited several people who were who counted themselves as his mentees. About 100 people attended that function, about 60 of whom were mentees. And they were asked to give six words, either six adjectives or a six-word phrase, but six words. And we put all those words together, and we made this double helical word cloud here, and the words are represented in terms of their size, in terms of how many times those words kept coming up. And you can see there's mentor, dedicated, gracious, all the wonderful things you would expect from a mentor. And, and we made this into a plaque and gave it to him as a, as a farewell. Um, and I'll leave you with this slide. Please join me in congratulating Dr. John J. Mulvihill as the recipient of the 2017 Mentorship Award. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, gracious words already, and uh, they're appreciated. Maybe not all deserved, but much appreciated. Um, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be used by the awards committee and the board of directors to accept this award as a route to showing the new emphasis that the society has going to be placing on issues of mentorship. The um, uh, I received the uh, award with double happiness, and I picked that word because this is the, oh boy, um, that uh, character at the top of this arch is double happiness in Mandarin. Here is the dragon um, male uh, climbing up to the, meet the peacock, um, uh, beautiful peacock bride. Uh, in front of hotels uh, all over, in this case, Chengchong, uh, Zheling province, uh, when there's a wedding going on or a reception going on. The um, remarks that I have are going to be a little bit of allusion to Mendel and his role in mentoring. Uh, you'll learn a lot of synonyms for mentor, and I hope you'll remember and uh, recall your mentor or mentees uh, and have a few words about them. And your activity can be to resolve to identify one more mentee or mentor uh, in your life in the next uh, three, or three to five months. First, I wanted to congratulate Elaine Zakai, who couldn't uh, uh, be available last year as the inaugural Menteeship awardee. Uh, and so we uh, had a little party last night with the pen reception. To turn to Mendel, um, we're approaching his bicentennial, so we've got to start organizing the celebration of the bicentennial of Men Mendel's birth. He um, is famous or has this myth that here was this lonely monk thinking his lonely thoughts alone in the garden, uh, picking peas. Um, but at age 11, he had a mentor. It was the parish priest who told his folks get that kid to a better school. He, he can't stay in this school. He's too good. Uh, get him over to that charter um, magnet school in the next town. I know it's going to cost you something, but you better do that, and he thrived there as well. The second, um, in a sense, helpers that Mendel had as the firstborn male, he was going to be destined to pick up the family farm and, and run it. But his two sisters and brother-in-law stepped up and said, no, no, we know you have higher other aspirations and university training and all that. We'll take over the farm for you. Don't worry about it. Um, so he got uh, to go, and he joined the Augustinian uh, order of priest and met Abbot Knapp, who wrote to one of his colleagues, the views you have been good enough to express regarding Father Mendel have decided me to send him to Vienna for higher education. I will spare no expense. And so the order sent him to university where one of his mentors turned out to be none other than Doppler as of Doppler effect. And so Mendel learned mathematics and uh, combinational uh, calculations that probably informed his analysis of the, of the piece a, a decade later. And IH has defined a mentor as a recognized investigator, accomplished investigator with a track record of success in training that the mentor has to have independent funding to support his mentee's work. Um, that's just a little detail. 
A uh, mentor comes from me mind, mens, uh, one who uses his mind, one who thinks. And there's a ton of synonyms, but they're not quite on the mark. Um, mentor, civ monitor, civilize, encourage, support. But it's all, that's why we need the word mentor, because it describes this special uh, skill. Uh, to take just two of those words and see if you think in your life uh, you, they relate to this. To train is to direct the growth of a plant, or usually by bending, pruning, tying, uh, to make fit or proficient. Uh, to educate is to provide schooling for or to develop mentally, morally, and aesthetically, especially by instruction. To persuade or condition to feel, believe, or act in a certain desired way like getting to the ASHAG meeting this year. The current definition in the dictionary is a trusted, wise, and faithful counselor or guide, especially in an occupational setting. And it dates back only 2,800 years um, to uh, Ulysses uh, picking mentor to be the guardian of his children when he went off around the known world. Here's a picture of it. Uh-oh, uh is this going to work? Well. Uh, this ruddy-faced uh, young late teenager, maybe, uh, Telemachus, uh, is op welcomed or maybe induced or seduced by Calypso uh, to maybe go up the stairway on the right that probably doesn't lead to the kitchen. Um, and on the left is Mentor, the, the visage of an old bearded man, but that's just to make him socially acceptable because really he's a female, she's a female, um, Athena, the goddess of war and wisdom. <laughs> That's the internal nature of a mentor, I guess. Um, in the Odyssey, mentor is described as a person of integrity, an excellent friend of friends. He'll speak out, um, uh, give counsel, not deal in lies, and not be above manipulating for his mentee, um, like uh, Abbot Knapp did for, uh, for Gregor. While you're thinking perhaps of your mentors or mentees, uh, let me describe a couple of mine. The Wilsons, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, Larry and Eleanor, um, made me feel special. I don't know why, it may have been my reading into the situation. Mr. Wilson regaled us with something so easy and intelligible as Punnett Squares. So I said, got it, I got it. Mrs. Wilson tried to teach me writing, uh, partly with getting a double F on the first two assignments that obviously I still remember. Um, the, uh, at college, um, Malumphy was the severe looking, aloof, distant uh, professor of biology uh, who, uh, who I got to know in my senior year. Um, and one of us had changed, probably not him, uh, but he comes into the lab during a vacation week I was working. He said, do you want some sherry? Now this was, a boys college, Holy Cross, uh, no, no liquor on campus. And he said, oh, you're, getting, you're engaged. I have two pieces of advice for raising children. And this is a lifelong bachelor. We didn't follow him, but when the school contacted me about three years later that he had died, he said, and by the way, do you know that he set aside scholarship funds for any children you would have that go to Holy Cross? I said, wow. At medical school, it was Benershka and, and Dave Smith they gave me praise that might not be due. Uh, Kurt had me over for dinner with my wife when he brought his mentor up from uh, Harvard to give a professorship. Uh, Dave Smith got me to my first professional meeting. Kurt got me my um, position at NIH. And they both autographed their first books to me. Um, Kurt said, uh, to, uh, for the highest esteem for his enthusiasm and integrity. And Dave Smith wrote, to a very bright future. Boy, were they setting expectations. I really had to produce if they were giving that endorsement. At NIH, it was Bob Miller uh, who sent me right away to the Bar Harbor course uh, and also said, um, by the way, I'm going to take a sabbatical in Hawaii, write something up for science, uh, fill in for me at the National Academy of Science committee that I'm on, uh, they, uh, keep track of it for me, and when I come back, I'm gonna be chairman of an AAP committee. Uh, you have to join it and take minutes for me. Um, I became acquainted with and relied on uh, uh, some of the kings of genetics uh, over the years. At Pittsburgh, not everything got done that I wanted to or they wanted me to do. And I realize now 
it was a lack of my identifying a mentor uh, for myself as a new chairperson. In Oklahoma, as Sanjay mentioned, a, a fellow of Banershka's showed up years ago as the head of Pediatric Path, and Banershka said, take care of Mulvihill. I don't know why he's going there, but take care of him, and he did. And Joanne Boffman's friend, uh, Ed Brandt, uh, had, just, had returned from being Assistant Secretary of Health and um, running NIH and other things. Uh, and he felt, uh, he made me feel that he was just there waiting for me to uh, ask for help, and he helped a lot. Um, there's two books on mentoring, one in science and one in medicine and clinical, uh, uh, and a lot more than that. But the bottom line is competence, confidence, and commitment. Um, I think uh, the clock's going, so I'm not going to uh, talk about the elements of mentoring uh, directly, except to emphasize, yes, it's both professional and personal growth of the mentee. It's a lifelong covenant, not a contract. You do this and I do that. Um, but it's based on um, being a big, good observer and a good listener. So it should be in your job description. You, you'll stay sharp, you'll improve your networking and collaboration, you'll be more productive, in a sense, have some longevity and immortality in, in your professional career. It's joyful, very satisfying, and immense source of pride. I sort of think of it as C.S. Lewis has a book on the four loves, and I sort of think of it as the fifth love. Um, uh, maybe that's stretching it. The, um, here's my lovely family, my bride of 51 years, our three recombinants, and there are six recombinants uh, who have been very supportive over the year. And I thank all the people in bold that I understand uh, contributed to the nomination. And these are some of the mentees at, at different places or colleagues, including now at NIH, the bottom two, Anastasia Weiss and Terry Manolio. Thank you all very much, and keep it up. <laughs>